Welcome to another unit of this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use the output from a conjoint analysis to calculate the marginal willingness to pay. Well, we cannot directly do this before we have to assure that at least one criterion is met. This criterion means we need to have a price part price attribute and this price attribute needs to be linear. That's actually why it still displayed the code I used for the conjoint analysis down here. So I use the part factors and say well price is linear, in this case linear less, meaning higher values describe lower marginal utilities. Also you need to have values which follow more or less this linear structure. That's the re first requirement or the major requirement. I always find this a bit easier if I also center them, meaning I set one of these levels to zero. Here in this case, I start with the 15,000 being zero and the rest in reference to this. So in other words, I set for 15,000 a value of zero and for all the other levels, so the 18,000 and the 20,000, I subtract from their value the value for the 15,000. So before I had here value 15, 18, 20. So minus 15 for each of them gives me here a value of 0, of 3, and of 5. It's still linear, but with this part being the base category being more or less my level to compare everything else with. Well, this always makes sense because then the calculation will be a bit easier. Also, I need to set a base category for all the other things I calculate because I cannot simply say, well, black has this marginal willingness to pay, but I can always say, well, if I start with black, and I switch to red, then this will increase or decrease the money I'm willing to pay. So if here, make my notes, my syntax, even though this is not a very nice style, but still, that way we can see all this at once. If I said with color that my base level would be black, then to calculate the marginal um, willingness to pay for red. So in other words, when I want to switch from a black color to red color, what would I be willing to pay for this? Then I calculate it in a following way. First off, I take the marginal utilities for black and red. Here in this case, for red, 0 0.218 minus the one for the base category, so for black, 0 0.057. This I divide for something similar for the price. Well, if I already have a base category for price, it's actually pretty easy because, well, I just need those values. Which of them do I select? Well, doesn't matter. I just need to remind myself which of the two I selected. In some books you find the recommendation always use the largest gap possible, so the smallest and the largest volume. So if here we select base level 15,000 and 20,000, then I do the same thing for the corresponding marginal utilities as I did before. I take the one for the higher value minus 0 0.334 minus for the base level, so minus zero. And that's where you see why I said makes sense to center this before, because then this calculation becomes relatively easy. So that's the first step. Now I need to multiply this part with the, well, distance I covered in the price variable. So here I went from 15,000 to 20,000. So I covered a distance of 5,000. So I have to multiply 
this part I calculated here with these 5,000. If I selected instead 15 and 18,000, I would have here minus 0 0.2 and here only 3,000. Well, if I take this, I calculate this expression, meaning I start with 0 0.2. 218 minus 0 0.057, I get 0 0.161 divided by 0 0.334 with a minus and multiplied with 5000 gives me minus 2410.18. The minus I change, so if this is a minus, I make it a plus. If this would be a plus, I change it to a minus. And that is actually, in monetary units, how much the switch from black to red is worth. We see the marginal utility for red is larger, so it actually needs to be a positive increase. We could have changed these values here as well, but then it would be a slightly different way to work with and not always value you switch to minus base level so it's not always then minus base level so i rather do this way say well we turn this sign around in other words if i calculate it like this i get a value here marginal willingness to pay of 2410.18 so if i were to switch from a black car to red car i would be willing to pay 2,410 euros and 18 cents more. I could then do the same thing for blue. Here I see that the marginal willingness, uh, the marginal utility for blue is smaller than black. So here I will actually get a negative value. So blue is worth less than black in my perception. What do I calculate here? Well, for prices, everything remains the same. So I still have the 5,000 here. The only thing which changes now, I'm switching from black to blue, not black to red. I have to switch, therefore, the marginal utility for red, 0 0.218, this one here, to the minus 0 0.275. So I have here minus 0 0.275 minus black, where I come from, divided by, and what? Well, it's still the same, zero point, uh, minus 0 0.334. Well, I could skip the minus zero. And if I calculate this here, again, 0 0.275 minus, minus 0 0.057, gives me minus 0 0.332 divided by minus 0 0.334 gives me 0 0.994 something times 5,000 gives me a value of 4,970.06. This is positive. Again, I have to change the sign, meaning switching from black to blue would decrease my marginal willingness to pay by 4,970 euros and six cents. And that's always the way I go. I select a base level and then I'm talking about what is the switch from this base level to any of the other levels worth to me. I select a range for the prices makes sense to always select the largest one because, well, inherently we assume that the price range is defined by smallest and largest value. This could differ as well, especially if we work here with ideal or anti-ideal scale um, attributes. But this is usually the best way to get a decent result. But well, we could also extrapolate and then get values larger than 20,000 or smaller than 15,000.
Still, I have here the difference between the two selected price levels and I have here the difference between the corresponding marginal utilities. And that's everything there is to calculating the marginal willingness to pay regarding specific um, levels for each of my attributes. Well, this then already concludes the session. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I say goodbye and see you next time.